family, this is Pastor Mac, and I want to say thank you for watching this message today. We're bringing to you live the Impact Experience every Tuesday, Tuesday mornings at 7.30 a.m. and Thursday nights at 10 p.m. We're coming to you live, and we're bringing you a message from God. Listen, I hope that this message blesses your life. Share this, because you sharing this could change somebody's life forever. Something phenomenal is getting ready to happen just for you. God bless you aren't the same but what unifies a family is the fact that we're all headed in the same direction toward the fulfillment of a common purpose and goal in a sense it is the sense that uh that which is we get what we have gathered together is bigger than our own individual preferences all right that's how you can get over your little attitude that you have with your brother and sister because you understand that I don't have time not to like you I don't have time to talk about you because what we're together supposed to be pressing toward is bigger than this little mess we got going on all right uh, now now understand this it is to be diligent everybody say be diligent it is to make a deep commitment to the goal the Holy Spirit is interested amongst God's people to create an atmosphere, a climate control, an environment where the thing that ties it together is the spirit. That's why the word says preserve the unity of the spirit. All right. What this means is that uh, if you are not spiritual or have no orientation in the spirit or to the spirit, you will have a problem preserving unity because your point of reference won't be the spirit of God. Wow. And the only other point of reference would be the flesh. Wow. All right. So the conflicts among us uh, and within us is really a battle between the spirit and the flesh. I don't think y'all got that. Let me back up and say this again. Uh, what this means is that if you are not spiritual or you have no orientation to the spirit you will have a problem preserving unity because your point of reference is not the spirit yeah. I can tell if you have the Holy Ghost by how you respond to certain situations when your brother or sister offends you your response tells me if you're trying to preserve unity by the spirit of God or if you're trying uh, to bring dis dishonor to the body of Christ or, or disunity to the body of Christ by your response to certain situations are y'all with me here that's why Galatians 5 says walk by the spirit so you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh so the lack of unity is because uh, the spirit's control is not being preserved. There has been a removal of the spirit's approach to a thing which leads to division, disharmony, and chaos. Right? Whenever there is continual conflict, whenever there is unresolved conflict, that means that the spirit of God has not been allowed to override the human flesh. Are y'all with me? Let me back up and say this again. Whenever there is continual conflict, whenever there is unresolved conflict, that means that the spirit of God has not been able or been allowed to override the human flesh. And so that brings chaos. And more importantly, you cannot dismantle the plan of the enemy God has been left out of the equation that's why he says preserve it because when allowed the spirit of God will overrule the human things uh, that bring about the sustaining of conflict so you got to understand this the Holy Spirit y'all sound bored the Holy Spirit is the emulsifier of the people of God All right the Holy Spirit is the emulsifier. When I looked up that word emulsifier, it means it is something that causes the stability between two components. So God is able, the Holy Spirit is able to take this thing and that thing and bring it together. Although they don't agree, they don't seem to be on the same page, they don't like each other. The emulsifying power of the Holy Spirit is able to bring them together and find stability. Right? 
Uh, it is the Holy Spirit that is the emulsifier of the people of God. If there is continual conflict, disunity among the church, it is because you have refused the emulsifying work of the Holy Spirit. The enemy wants you to think that these are the underlying problems, but these problems are issues uh, that are there that go unaddressed by the spirit and create conflict. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to deal with what's on the inside of you. There's some unresolved issues on the inside of you, and it's causing you not to be able to connect with other people. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to our text, but watch this. Preserve the unity of the spirit with the bond, the belt of peace. James says there are battles among you because there are battles within you. Some of y'all bring a lot of problems because you got a lot of problems. Lord have mercy. It, it, it's in the text. We'll get there in just a minute. Uh, so you have to understand this. You have to understand this. Uh, you have to preserve the unity of the spirit with the bond or the belt of peace. Uh, you can't handle authority. Some of us have problems that are deep rooted and that's why we cannot uh, connect and be unified as a body. Uh, some of you can't handle authority because you uh, maybe never had a father uh, or authority in your life or you've been treated bad or you were verbally abused so whenever someone says something to you, you are easily offended and super sensitive because of what you're battling within. Lord have mercy. That's why some of you can't handle correction. <laughs> you can't handle correction from your leader. You'll never about just walk out the sanctuary or you won't even come to church when your leader corrects you because first of all, you don't have the right perspective of your leader. That's a whole nother sermon. But the other thing is that there's something within you that causes you to rebel against authority and you got to be able to pinpoint what that is because it's breaking up the unity in the church to preserve the unity of the spirit it starts with the character of a person unspiritual people will never produce unity you come to church in the flesh come to live at five just to dance you'll never be any strength to the unity of the church that's why you must become the kind of Christian that God can work through so that unity can be displayed from you uh, before it is among you I need you to write this down real quickly the strength of unity is found in the stability of your humility Uh, I got a better response from myself when I said it in the shower. The, the, the strength of unity is found in the stability of your humility. Some of you, your humility is unstable. <laughs> Especially you who, who know how to be a Christian. You know, you know how to do this save thing. You, your humility is actually... Um, it's actually false humility. It's, it's really fake. It's really fake. It's unstable because you are only humble at times. Oh, come on. Y'all ain't talking. Come on, gifted people, you singers, you musicians. Come on, you preachers. Talk to me real quick. You know how to say to God be the glory when in your flesh you really think you killed. Because your humility is unstable. You're only humble at times. You're trying to figure out why you're so gifted, but God hasn't opened many doors from you. It's because while people hear you say to God be the glory, God sees you giving yourself glory. He's not going to elevate you and then you take all the credit for the elevation. Lord have mercy. So the strength of unity is found in the stability of your humility. You have to be able, here's another perspective, to humble yourself to connect with your brothers and sisters. Some of y'all don't even talk to each other. Go to the same church. You've been here for four years. Still don't talk to each other. Walk by on Sundays. Don't even speak. 
That's why it's so hard for you all. With all the culture shifts, changes that we've made in this church, the hardest change for you all is a culture of encouragement. You still don't have a word for your brothers and sisters. Somebody can come to church depressed and you depending on Matt with the mic to bring them out of what they're dealing with when you got a word sitting right beside them. Five things, write these down, five things and we're going to deal with the text and we'll be done. I hollered Friday, I hollered this morning, I ain't hollering today. The destruction of unity, five things that bring about the destruction of unity. Number one, poor communication. Ephesians 4 and 29, please write that down, Ephesians 4 and 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, we cannot have poor communication. If this message has blessed you so far, feel free to sow into our ministry through Cash App or give online on our website at www.mmccrally.com. If you would like to watch this message in its entirety, visit our Facebook page to see the live playback. We pray this word has been life-changing to you. And now, back to this empowering message. Now, so for me to break that down so that you all can understand what I'm actually saying, poor communication is when you don't know how to talk about your church. You don't know how to have a conversation about your brothers and sisters. You mess up how people see the church by the way you communicate the church to the public. The most dangerous thing uh, that will ever enter into the church is a person who's too familiar with the church. So when other people come into the church, when they want to connect with the church, they come in, they're excited. They're excited. Every time I think about uh, people who are excited, I think about the first Sunday that I, I, I saw uh, uh, Trent and Brittany come into church. They came in. They came in hype. They came in hype. Praise and worship going on. They waving their hands. They came in hype. And my fear was, I hope they don't get near. Some of these people who've been here too long. The ones who just sit and be on your phone there in praise and worship. You've been here too long. Have no worship. Have no praise. You've been here too long. All you, have, all you can do is sit there and try to judge everything that's going on. And they should have did this that way. They should have did this that way. And so because of that, you have poor communication in communicating your church to the public. That's why. You've been here so long, but nobody has joined the church because of you. Check your report card. How many people have connected with Mount Moriah because of your testimony? The Bible, the Bible says, Ephesians 4 and 29, let no corrupt communication. You may, now every church got problems, but that ain't what you talk about when you go in public. That's, that's, not, that's not what we discuss when we go in public. Every church got problems, but that's not what you talk about when you go out. Because if you let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, you got to understand that if you talk bad about the church, it's not just Mount Moriah they ain't going to. It's the church they're going to run away from. Second thing, Lord have mercy, help me here. Second thing that destroys unity Gossip. Gossip. Lord, I done messed up every group chat already. <clears throat> Second thing that messes up unity is gossip. First Thessalonians 4 and 11, I'm going to give you time to find it yourself. First Thessalonians 4 and 11. Find every translation you want to find. It says here, and make it your ambition to shut up. Make it your business to live a quiet life. Is that what the word says? Make it your business to be quiet. Some of y'all just talk too much. 
It says, make it your business to lead a quiet life. Watch this next part. You should mind your own business. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm so glad. This, no, this is 1 Thessalonians. It's not 1 McNair. It's, it's 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11. It says, you should mind your own business and work. See, that's the problem. Some of y'all got more mouth than you got time. You, 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 you got more mouth than you got attendance. Mind your business and work with your hands. That's the only time we need a quiet church when you're working. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Let's get off that. Number three. Unresolved disagreements destroy unity. Unresolved disagreements destroy unity. Matthew 18 and 15. Matthew 18 and 15. Please write these down. Matthew 18 and 15 because I want you to go back and study. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. Watch this next part. Just between the two of you. <laughs> if your brother or sister has made you upset, you don't have to tell 15 people in the church before you go deal with them. Bible says, somebody say he preaching Bible. The Bible says just between the two of you. If they listen, you have won them over. Can I tell you something? The only reason some of you have unresolved conflicts between each other and the reason that you have not won over, as the Bible says, your brother or sister, is because they don't trust what's coming out of your mouth because you done told 15 other people a different story about the situation before you came to them. Matthew 5 and 23. Lord have mercy. Matthew 5 and 23. It says, therefore, if you are offering a gift at the altar, and while you're there, you remember you have something against your brother or sister, leave your gift. Go get that straight. And then come back and present your gift. In other words, God says, I don't even want this offering because you can't get along with them. Go get that straight first. Lord, have mercy. And then come back and offer up your offering. You got to fix the unresolved disagreements. When are you going to grow up so we can move forward? Number four. Number four, lack in shared purpose. First, first Corinthians 1 and 10. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, lack and shared purpose. It says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there are no divisions among you, but that you are perfectly united in mind and thought. You got to understand, see, first of all, you need to understand the vision of the house. You need to understand the vision of the house, the direction of the house, so that we all have a, a mindset of the shared purpose of the house. When you don't have the mindset, the mindset of the shared purpose of the house, if you don't agree with the purpose of the house, if you don't agree with the vision of the house, you will always try to find a way to bring division. If you don't like a certain person in a position, you will always try to find a way to bring division. You will always try. That's where gossip comes in because then you try to mess up the perspective that somebody else has towards somebody you don't like. And so it brings division into the house of God. Y'all yeah. yeah. can sit there like you don't know what I'm talking about all you want to. Number five, sanctioned incompetence. Second Timothy 2 and 15 is the best scripture to bring this to light, it says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. All right? 
Are y'all with me? You have to be careful operating in ministry in a place of incompetence. We've talked about this before, but when was the last time after your leader put you in position that you signed up for a class? That you attended a conference? That you ordered a book? You order everything else on Prime, you order a book to enhance yourself to become, to become competent to do what you're supposed to do. Are y'all with us? All right. Then we find here in Colossians that Paul commends the church of Colossae for being knitted together. Now this for a, a reasons uh, is a great thing because the first of all, this is a Christological book. Right? Colossians is a Christological book, the study of Christ. It is a Christological book expressing the supremacy of Christ, uh, which was written in a declining town. So Paul somewhat opens here by telling them, I, I, want, you, I want you to know and I want you to realize uh, that I continue to work hard for you and for the Christians over in Laodicea. He says, interestingly, Paul says, now many of you have not met me face to face, but it doesn't matter. I'm praying for you and I'm on your side. I'm right alongside with you. You're not alone in what you're doing. All right. Then he goes on to say, I want you to be woven into the tapestry of love. Now, uh, let's let's unpack this statement. In the King James Version, he says, knit together. Right. In the NIV, he says, united together. But in the Message Bible, uh, he gives us a, a, a stronger word. He says, I want you to be woven together. Now, here it depicts the saints of God being interlocked together, not easily or capable. Watch this. Not easily or ca capable to be yanked apart or to be pulled apart by the current conditions of the church around the church concerning the church. Paul lets them know that I'm not there with you, yet I know what you're dealing with. Paul says, I, I, I know, and, and we are in this thing together. But I want to commend you. I want to commend you for being woven together in love. Lord, have mercy. Through all of what we go through independent from the church and collectively from the church, Paul says, and I pass this on to you, he says, you have managed to stay woven together in love. Paul says, with everything that you've been through independently from the church, Lord, have mercy. See, that's some of our problem because we go through so much away from the church that we blame the church for what we're going through. So, so you come to church and everybody getting on your, on your nerves. Every, everybody make you sick. These people around here make me sick. No, 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 no. Your problems make you sick. What you're going through apart from the church, you're bringing it to church and want to place the blame on the church. It doesn't work like that. Paul says, I want to commend you because independently from the church and collectively as a church, you have managed to stay woven together. Which means we cannot lose our momentum, Mount Moriah. We cannot lose our stride. We can't let the trouble that we may be facing as a body of believers to mess up our unity in love. Are y'all with me? Paul was commending them. Watch this. He was commending them for staying with the body of believers. He wasn't talking about the body of Christ. He wasn't talking to them about staying saved. He wasn't saying, I'm proud of you for staying saved and not backsliding. No, he says, I'm proud of you because you have stayed woven together. You haven't left the church. The interlocking protects the church confrontation. Mm. I need you to understand that. If we stay locked together, whatever comes at the church cannot defeat the church because we are interlocked together. Are y'all with me? I'm not going to be able to finish all of this, but I need you to understand this. Three reasons to be woven, as Paul has said. If, number one, it exemplifies true Christian love. 
All right. Encouraged in the heart. Number two, endless riches by being woven in love. Number three, the acknowledgement of the mystery being settled in their understanding of the truth. Lord have mercy. Now, now these three things help them stay together in a society and in a town that is going down. I, I need you to understand this, Mount Moriah. We have to stay unified in a region, in a city that may be going down. Because if they're going down and we're going down, then they have nowhere to go to get hope when they're going down. So we have to... We have to stay together. We have to stay together. We have to unify. Now, Paul gives them a threefold identi identification. First, he calls them holy. This means that the Colossian believers, like all believers today, are set apart by and for God. All right? We are a holy people. I said we are a holy people. And we are set apart by and for God. God. Next, Paul refers to them as faithful. faithful. Right? Now, my question is, because y'all not saying too much, is this what God can say about you? Wow. Because Paul here is not correcting them once again. He's commending them. He says, good job, because you've been holy. Wow, what an amazing God we serve who will give us such an amazing word to present to you. Listen, every Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. and every Thursday at 10 p.m., we are here with the Impact Experience. But listen, this is what I want you to do. If you're in the Raleigh area, we want you to join us live at 5 p.m. every Sunday for the Impact Experience live, all right? That is at the Mount Moriah Community Church, Raleigh, North Carolina. So listen, share this video and then follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and then subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can have everything that God has given us to give to the body of Christ. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, God has something phenomenal just for you. God bless. Join us same time next week for another equipping and impactful word with Pastor Aaron McNeil II. For additional information and resources, visit us online at mmccrally.com and follow us on social media at mmccrally. Thank you for watching. We pray that God does something phenomenal just for you.